some time ago, I was asked the question, Jim, if you were not a minister, would you attend church? Would you be in worship? Really? I thought, wow, that's a good question. Would I really? Well, I thought about that. And honestly, sometimes I wouldn't. But most of the time I am. And I want to tell you why. And the first thing that jumped into my mind was a group of Christians in another part of the world. So let's use our imaginations this morning. Imagine you were a factory worker in a distant country. And on Sunday morning, you made your way to a familiar house on the other side of town. You walked up the driveway, you looked around to see if anyone was watching you, and you entered through the back door. In the living room was a gathering. Some of the persons you knew and others you did not, and you were a little suspicious of the ones you did not know, but you were assured that they were okay by others. You felt a little more comfortable. This was your church. The minister stood up and welcomed everybody, and he read from the Bible, and he had a few words to say. And then he spread a white cloth out. He took some bread, and he broke it. And then he took some wine, and he poured it into a cup. And as he did, he spoke the familiar words of Jesus. This is my body. This is my blood. The bread and the wine were passed to everyone. After a few more words, the meeting concluded, and you and others slipped out the rear door. And that was that. No, there's more. As you made your way to the street, you heard a siren, and a police car drove up. What's going on here, the officer asked. No one said anything. But he knew you all were attending a worship service. Now everyone knew the law. This was illegal. Well, were you gathering for worship? Are you Christians? What about it? You and the others had to choose. No choice but to admit that, yes, you were there worshiping. And the consequence, you were arrested. You were taken away, scared to death, and probably sentenced to a time in jail and maybe for some, a labor camp. That could be a true story in a few parts of our world today. And it's certainly been true throughout history. And it was true in the time of the Apostle Paul. Why did they risk it? Why do people risk it today? Why, because that seemingly meaningless ceremony was at the very heart and center of their lives. Today, like then, in that distant country, it brings them into contact with God, into contact with Jesus and with one another. Everything else depends on that. And without that inward journey together, their faith would have long been weakened or even destroyed, gone. Why do I attend church regularly? Why am I at worship? simply because I, like them, must. If my faith is to remain spiritually vital, I must. It's that simple. And there are millions down through history who felt the same way. And today, on this very Sunday, in virtually all parts of the world, there are persons who have gathered or will gather for the very same reason. Now, in talking with parishioners over the years, each of them has responded with words like nourishment or refueling. And I suppose that, in part, is true for me. When I'm absent, I miss it. I miss some of you. I miss being nourished. Worship does something for me. It reminds me of something and therefore nourishes me. Now, Admittedly, it's not all to my liking. Admittedly, sometimes I experience it as boring. Oh, not here at Wesley Church. <laughs> Still, behind and beneath and around these songs of praise, the great hymns, the moving anthem, those words of scripture, that act of giving, the message of the sermon, 
and the organ music on both sides is that mysterious thing that gives a quality to my life that I don't want to be without once I have found it and once I have experienced it regularly. Why am I present at worship? Oh, for so many reasons, so many. There's that mysterious quality about it, a mystical quality. It at times rises to what the Irish call the thin place. But more needs to be said. What's behind the mystery? Well, you know, to worship is to be reminded of our salvation story. To be reminded who I am and to whom I belong. To be reminded of the grace of God, for it's out of that framework that I live out my life day by day. Now consider our scripture for today. It's Isaiah's story, it's his call. And he enters the temple and he's overcome by God, the glory of God. And overcome by the glory of God, he admits his condition. Oh, not in words that we use. Uh, he had quite an imagination. But in his words, woe is me, he said, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips. And then he experiences grace. One of God's messengers touches his lips with a live coal taken from the altar and speaks. Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Now I know we don't talk that way, but that's Isaiah's way of telling it. But then follows the question of commitment and mission. Isaiah goes on, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go for us? And Isaiah responds, here am I, send me. The words that reflect the mood at the conclusion of worship. Well, that's Isaiah's story. But you know, it's also the story of God's people. It's my story, it's your story. In worship, we remember God's creating, sustaining, and redeeming work. We celebrate with one another the history of grace. Grow with God, says the bulletin. Now in no place is this put better or more complete than in the prayers for Holy Communion. You formed us in your own image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. How do we know that? When do we see grace? Where do we see grace? You delivered us from captivity. What are we talking about here? We're talking about the captivity in Egypt. Still, we needed reassurance. So, so Jesus, your spirit anointed him to proclaim release, to set at liberty. Well, what was he like? What did he do? He healed the sick. He fed the hungry and ate with sinners. And then the prayer continues. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from sin and death, and made with us a new covenant. The prayer reminds us that we can know the power of his presence. It finally concludes with the end of all worship, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world. Go to serve, says our bulletin. In the end, it's a mystery. God's grace, the offer of salvation. You know, we think, we talk a lot about sin, but sin doesn't always capture it for us today. But God's grace addresses us where we are, deep inside, and so, Am I estranged from God all life? Then grace. Do I need forgiveness? Do I need release from guilt? Then grace. Do I lack self-esteem? Do I lack meaning in life? Then the grace of God. Who are we? We are God's people, saved, liberated by the grace of God. Ah, that peace that passes understanding. So we depart again to live and serve 
as the people we are. That's why I'm at worship regularly. I need that reminder. Now let me put it more clearly. I suppose worship is a lot like a family celebration, a party. The family gathers together in one place. Greetings are given, gifts may be exchanged, food is shared, there even may be some singing, or perhaps the story, telling of a story or two, the sharing of some events or memories peculiar to the family. And when the party is over, the members scatter, having been nourished, for they've been reminded again, we are the Champlin family, we are the Griffith family, we are the Batten family, and so forth. Oh, they don't say that. But in a very real sense, that's what's happening. Indeed, to the extent that is happening, the family members are secure. They feel loyalty and they act in accordance with that family's values and goals. Well, the worship life of the church is very much like that. And that's why I am present. Why submit my body and my mind and my spirit to that exercise every Sunday? Sometimes exciting and sometimes boring. Why? Because I would not want to live in a world where there is no church. No worship of God, no preservation of the word. And feeling that way, I cannot abdicate my responsibility and turn it over to someone else. It's my responsibility if it's anyone's responsibility. Mine, no one else's. Why do I attend? Because I want to declare myself on the side of what the church stands for. Oh, I know the church has its critics, and some of it well-deserved, and I know it fails at times. After all, it's composed of human beings. But I know, too, that the principles are there. The values are there. It's only the practice that at times is wrong. And I want those values preserved, especially in a world with so many opposing values. Why do I attend? Because there's no Christianity apart from the worshiping community. Individual Christianity is a contradiction. The early church knew nothing of individual Christianity. Remember, where two or three are gathered together in my name, said Jesus. You know, that's God's gift of relationship. Why do I attend church? Because there I find the supports for maintaining the Christian lifestyle. They are concerned for the world order, for social injustice and human need are kept before me. There I find the reminders of what God and life are calling me to do. There life is kept in perspective. Life is placed in an eternal context. For I, like everyone, forget. Thank God there is one community still existing in the world that will not let me forget. Remember these words. Every valley shall be exalted and every mountain and hill shall be made low. The uneven ground shall become level and the rough places a plain, remember? Take heed lest you forget the Lord your God when you have eaten and are full. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. For I am certain that neither death nor life nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Do you remember? Let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. Meanwhile, these three remain faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. Do you remember? Well, where in heaven's name can one hear that? But in local churches like this all across the world. That's why I attend church. Amen.